Hello everyone, today we're watching another movie. This one we're going all the way back to 1965 with the original The Flight of the Phoenix. Now, I have never heard of this movie until a couple of my patrons started voting for it. And so we're going to be watching it together for a movie night. I don't think this is a really well-known movie, so if you're here, I really appreciate you being here and watching this. I did get curious, kind of look up the cast. I see that my boy Jimmy Stewart is in it, as well as Richard Attenborough, who I didn't know was the brother of David Attenborough, which is cool. And if you guys don't recognize the name Richard Attenborough like I didn't, I did see that he has played in Jurassic Park as John Hammond. So yeah, that's where I know him from. Uh, I know James Stewart from the uh, It's a Wonderful Life as well as Rear Window. And yeah, I've never seen this movie before. Again, never heard of it before until now. So let's get into it. The Flight of the Phoenix. Hope you guys enjoy. Right. We're going to be on time in Benghazi. I don't see why not, Gabriel. Cigarette? I think. Everybody's so it's be sweaty. Be people to give the army a lift. Must be hot in there. Oh, I meant to tell you, the number four control pulley on the starboard side seems a bit noisy. I better have a look. Good old Jimmy's the pilot, huh? All right, straight. Now, don't over control. No sweat. Thank you very much. Hi, Skipper. All right. So he's the pilot and the mechanic? You try this. One drink. The girl comes out of the picture and bites you. Skip. Oh, you want some ouzo? No thanks, son. I'm driving. I reckon I deserve this. Listen to that wog music. It's giving monkey. me a headache. The quality's all right. Squeak a little, that's all. That's quite a respectable sandstorm he's sending our way. Yeah, I'm seeing it. We're figuring a little local sandstorm. A pilot is supposed to use his own judgment, don't you think? I don't know, Lou. I suppose pilots are just as good now as they ever were, but they sure don't live the way we did. That there were times when you took real pride in just getting there. It's interesting him talking about, like, the good old days. 2024 is going to be like the good old days far into the future. And people always will always think it was better in their time. It's just how... As the cycle goes on and on. <laughs> but I must say, without a radio, I would have expected them to turn for their alternate airport by now. That pilot. I would have thought he was a little elderly to be flying without a co-pilot. Not gonna let up, Frank! Now, is that squeaky pulley gonna get messed up? Something tells me we're not supposed to be on fire there. That right engine didn't make it. We're just gonna have to put her down before this one quits too. We going in with our wheels down? I'd give anything not to, but we'll never get up again if I don't. So we're gonna try to like skipping rocks on a on a lake. Oh my goodness. That can't be good. What's happening? No engines. <laughs> the flight of the phoenix. Ooh. Did we lose one already? Ow. That landing wasn't too bad. Three trapped the back. Three trapped the back. Three trapped. Oh no. Good thing they have a doctor with them. The leg is entirely crushed. Ooh. What about the other two back here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when that thing, when I saw that thing come down on that guy, I was like, I don't think he's surviving that. What are we gonna do now? In the middle of the desert, water is gonna be a problem for sure. One of many. Well, 
Well, I wonder if Frank got a little cocky there, if that was kind of unavoidable, because they were saying, shouldn't we go to, like, another airport? And he was like, you know, this sandstorm's no match for us. We're bigger than it, whatever. I wonder if he put them in a dangerous situation that didn't have to be. Do you want to say something? Like what? Sorry? Captain, don't you think it's time we started getting things organized all around? Hmm? Yes, I think you're right. Maybe you better check on our water supply and figure up some kind of rationing or something. Mm-hmm. I take it there will be an air search before long. He's a right little organizer, your captain, isn't he? Tough in those bunch of gits. You shouldn't have joined, should you? My dad joined me. You'll be all right, he said. You like it. I know you will. You didn't have to join for bleeding life, did you? One thing leads to another, doesn't it? Hey, Fritz! Give us a loan of your boat when you finish, will you? My name is Dorfman. Heinrich Dorfman. Is that a German name? 1600 hours, March 17th. Captain's log. <laughs> what about my wife, Doctor? No, don't think about it now. She'll be all right. Do you have any kind of liquor on board? Well, uh, there's still some morphine left. Wouldn't that be better? I would like to save it for when the pain gets worse. Cause of crash, pilot error. Oh, yep. So he's feeling a lot of guilt right now. Uh, could I have your attention, please? And Dr. Renault informs me that uh, we should require, as an absolute minimum, one pint of water per person per day. So that gives us roughly 10 to 11 days. That is, of course, if we just sit here and uh, don't exert ourselves in any way. Couldn't we set aside just a little bit for washing? Washing? <laughs> what a dumb thing. He doesn't realize the severity of that this situation might become. There happens to be an almost unlimited supply of pressed dates on board. They've been sent back from Jebel because nobody would eat them. I like dates. No, wait, I like prunes. Do I like dates? <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Towns, but shouldn't some kind of rescue plane or something have seen us by now? Well, anyway, you don't have to worry. They'll be here. A bit optimistic, aren't you? I don't think so. Well, being 130 miles off course isn't exactly gonna help. Mmm. That's kind of a long ways off course. Maybe they can radio for help. It's mine! I bought it! Did it ever occur to you we could use this thing to find out what's happening? It's my fault. I, I should have... So I was looking up some of the actors in this movie before a few days ago. And the guy who plays Lou, Richard Attenborough, I believe, he's he was in Jurassic Park, right? I would not have recognized hey, him, though. Hey, that damn thing off! I'm trying to remain reasonably clean. You think that's some kind of a picnic? Priorities are going to change as we go, I assume. I don't think you'll find any station we want until nightfall. Oh, keep it there, though. I like that. Oh, that was good. Well, this country needs... There's a few more pubs. Oh, more sandstorms. Great. Tie it off! So it won't blow away! Okay, now get aboard! Push! Push! How are you feeling? You better have some more of this. I think you like this better than I do. Matter of fact, I've given it up. Oh, he's fine. We'll have him back with his wife in no time. Maybe too late. Oh, don't you worry. We'll get you out of here. Is his wife sick? There aren't any animals for them to hunt or anything. Not, not even like bugs or anything. Well, you're not frightened, are you? Wait till the water runs out, then you can really start laughing. That's pretty nihilistic. <laughs> don't you worry, me old duck. They'll find us all right. Trouble is, we'll all be dead. Oh, never ending the sunlight days, the moonlit night. If they get radio signal, they can't be like that far out there. This is our fifth day. 
Most of them still believe it's only a matter of time before we're picked up. I wish I could be sure of that. Yeah, I see it. Up there. Oh. Hey. So far away, though. Hey! 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 Don't overexert yourselves. <laughs> I don't know what they could do that would be more visible than that bright red and white tarp that they have. I don't think they could see us even if they were looking for us. You're wasting your time. They didn't see us. Nobody could find us. That's right, Standish. Nobody will. It's time we tried to march out of here. Oh? Which way were you thinking of marching, Captain? What is our nearest water point? They wouldn't make it, though. How many were you thinking of taking with you? Well, apart from Sergeant Watson, I don't know yet. If they could walk to a water source, wouldn't they have gone already? Well, I suppose he's entitled to try. Well, he's not entitled to kill himself. Now take Sergeant Watson and anybody else who wants to come with me. You uh, wanted to know our position. We're in the uh, middle of this circle. Uh, Marada is uh, 106, say, uh, London to Birmingham. Well, that's our objective then, Marada. Well, I, I, I wouldn't march. Ten paces from here. In the daytime, it's hitting 120 in the shade. Ooh, 120. We intend marching by night. Precisely in what direction? One can navigate by the stars. Maradres, just look, there's absolutely nothing. nothing. If you miss this glorious little bunch of trees, there's nothing between you and the coast. And that's 500 miles. Well, nobody's suggesting that it was easy, Mr. Moran. Sounds like a suicide mission. Are you right-handed? Yes. Well, that means that your right leg is more developed than the other one and takes a longer step. You just go around in a left-handed circle like that. Is that true? <laughs> Joke's on you. I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> As it happens, he's left-handed. Now, if you'll excuse me. Come along, Sergeant. <laughs> he doesn't get it. <laughs> There's nothing you can do, Frankie. Gentlemen. So... How many hours would it take to walk 106 miles? We have everything here that we need to build a new one and fly it out. Are you trying to be funny? What did you say? I said, are you trying to be funny? Precisely the reaction I would have expected from a man of your obvious limitations. What's happening to everybody? Well, it's 120 degrees in the shade for one. I'd be cranky too and maybe a little crazy. Even if they were to, like, fix the plane up, they don't have a runway. How would they take off? Oh, his skin is peeling. This either. I'm going with Captain Harris. Oh, no. Hey, don't you know better than to tell Cobb he could go with you? The man's crazy. He wouldn't last a day out there. Cobb, I haven't even spoken to him. I want you to know I'm doing it all off my own bat. Maybe a bit of a gamble, but it's going to only increase your chances of being picked up. Come on, Sergeant. I guess. I guess if he were to make it out there and he could tell them where they are or something. Just tripped in the doorway, sir. Mm, it seems there is nothing broken. Perhaps you just sprained it. I look as if you're off on the sick parade, Sergeant. I suppose uh, I'd only be a burden to you. He doesn't want to go. Don't you worry about it, Sergeant. You don't think for a minute you were going out there on your own. I I'm going with him. <laughs> Isn't that right, Captain? I'm afraid not, old chap. Sorry, but I think it's better that you stay here. All right. Oh my goodness. There go. Easy, Cobb, easy, easy. <laughs> that uh, an oil journal you're reading? No. You're not in this line, then. I mean, drilling uh, oil. I'm an aircraft designer. Mm-hmm. Are you? Then you uh, really meant what you said about uh, getting this thing out of here. Did you think I was joking, perhaps? That I didn't think. But somebody did. They have a doctor, they have an aircraft designer. It's not too bad. But still, without a runway? Hey, he's the expert. What'd you have to tell the captain I couldn't go along for, huh? I didn't tell the captain anything. Well, you're the one I'd be fighting Jebel, though, wasn't it? All I had to do was hold on to this lousy job for another six months. Well, you still could go back. They ain't gonna let no head case run a drilling operation. Now you... You really must try to understand. Mental exhaustion can happen to anyone, but it doesn't last. Well, I don't understand all those fancy words. I don't think those guys would do the hiring do either. And this is during a time where they didn't talk about, I would assume, like, mental health, and they, they didn't have a, as good of an understanding about those kind of things as we I'm do now. I'm going to go along with Captain Harris. 
Why would you want to go walking off into that? Who knows, Mike? Maybe after a few days' walk, and we'll be better off than you are. It's all right. I will be back. I will be back. It's all right. Oh, the monkey doesn't want him to go. Oh. <laughs> you all set? Yes, sir. Welcome aboard. But I would be grateful if you'd send up some smoke at midday for the next three days. Three days? Yes, you won't need it after that. Do they have three days worth of water? There they go. So they said this guy, Mr. Cobb, is crazy. I thought maybe he had like a mental issue, but really he's just suffering some mental exhaustion. It's like some temporary thing, but they probably think he's just crazy. Just a crazy person. Oh no. Is he he's not thinking about chasing after him, is he? He's gone! He's gone! Oh, did Cobb go? Cobb's gone. Well, if he left, I mean, nothing they can do about it. They're not gonna go after him now, are they? Frankie, he's got six hours start on you. He didn't even stop to take a canteen. And it's my fault. I should have watched. He would be just as badly off as Harris would be. I'm gonna bring him back, Lou. Whoa. Okay, it's up to you, Lou, to keep all these guys together. <laughs> Good luck. It's gonna get worse and worse as time goes on. Mm. That sun is brutal. Look what it's doing to his skin. The prototype I have in mind would have to fly at the first attempt. To achieve that, Mr. Moran, Requires a pilot of quite outstanding capabilities. Frank Towns is probably one of the few really great pilots left in this push-button world of yours. Oh, really? Yes, oh, really? He has remembered everything and learnt nothing. And he apparently finds it necessary to run off into the desert in pursuit of the lunatic question is entirely academic. I agree. Entirely academic. No use arguing if he's the right pilot or not if he's not even here. Oh, this is insane. See, now, if Cobb is alive... Oh, he wrote his name. How's he gonna get back? Like, he's too t exhausted and dehydrated to... They gotta be at least six hours out. More than six hours. Oh, no. He came out... all. Oh. He was too late. It's three minutes after 12. Don't you want to start the signals for Captain Harris? <laughs> and your Captain Towns? Mm-hmm. Gotta get our captain back. <laughs> Are they gonna want to eat the monkey? Oh! He made it back. It's Frank! I kind of want to know more about their food situation. Like, do they... Do they only have dates? Or do they have other stuff too? You can go a while without food though. Monkey's probably looking pretty tasty though. Frank, I talked to Dorfman again. I, I do think he knows more than we give him credit for. Well, what's he dreamed up now? <laughs> well, j just talk to him. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to him, Lou. If we remove the starboard wing and attach it to the port boom, you'll see that we'll have the basis of uh, an entirely new and aerodynamically sound structure. And if we don't waste too much fuel on signals to Captain Harris, who is unlikely to be in any condition to benefit from them, we shall have enough of that as well. All right, now, what are you going to use for an undercarriage? Skis. In order to take off, we shall have to move the final structure to the valley beyond that far dune. The surface there should be adequate. Oh. The center of gravity will uh, allow us to distribute the payload, that means ourselves, on both wings. Now, wait a minute. Are you suggesting we string people on the top of that wing like so many sacks of potatoes? They'll be behind fairings, of course. We got an injured man in there. But you, you're suggesting we tack them onto this thing and bounce them around like a wrangler in a rodeo? <laughs> How long did you say Mr. Scanati might be expected to live? Six days? Perhaps less. Well, you really are a miserable... Now, let's see if I've got this straight. 
You're just going to unzip that starboard wing and lift it up all the way over from the other side. And do you know what that wing weighs? And how are they going to move this whole airplane into that valley? In a couple of days from now, nobody's going to have the strength to do anything around here. That is a very good point. The heavy work will need to be done first. The wing will have to be moved tonight. Tonight? Yes. I see no other immediate problems. Unless you have some more questions, I still have some calculations to make. <laughs> now, you say building this thing of yours will take 12 days. We just have enough water to last another 10. I don't see why not try. But I just want you to know that I've been flying for quite some time now. That engine's rated to 2,000 horsepower. Did it shake your patched up pile of junk into a thousand pieces and cut us up in the mince meat with the propeller? The only thing outstanding about you, Mr. Towns, is your stupidity. He's offering something for them to try. Better than waiting around to die. The way it is now, some of these men may not last as long as the water. But they need to believe that there is hope for them. Maybe to build a thing like this could be a lot of help. This is hard work. These men can't stand hard work. Watching each other die could be even harder. I mean, to, to Frank's point, it does seem pretty like it would be a miracle if they would pull it off. Are you asking me to kill the rest of them trying to get a death trap off the ground? I don't know, Louise. It won't work. Maybe it can't and we'll all be killed. But if there's just one chance in a thousand that he has got something, boy, I'd rather take it than just sit around here waiting to die. Mm-hmm. And giving them something to keep their mind occupied with and... You're there, Mr. Crow. We shall need those panels again. You must be more careful. Oh, he's a lovely little fella. A little ray of sunshine. Da -dee. Da -da -dum, da -dum. A slow, steady turn is quite sufficient. Don't let that needle drop below 80. You want me to leave this in place, Frank? Ask Mr. Dorfman. Mr. Moran, once you have finished that, would you please come to the tail end? I'll mark out the assembly for you. Sandcastle. I'm constructing a still. Oh, it's very cunning. Sometimes I wonder how you chaps never won the war. I wasn't involved. That's all right. You tell them. That's why they never won. <laughs> they didn't have old Heinrich. <laughs> Mr. Watson, don't forget, save those bolts. Very good. Where's he going? Is that that's the guy who went who wanted to Are we walk ready, out? Mr. Towns? Let's He's commence. not gonna say anything? Now All right, a little slower. <sighs> come on, pull on, come on. This is insane. is really not going to say anything. Another mouth to feed in water, I guess. Paris! He found him. And if he's alive, he's going to say that you saw him and you walked away. Uh, Sergeant, I've been holding the fort, eh? <laughs> But Dorfman's brainchild looks less like an airplane than it did when we started. He's right about one thing, though. The little man with the slide rules and computers are going to inherit the Earth. And it's kind of sad that Dorfman won't be there to see it. He respects him a little bit more now, at least. Hey, Standish! 
Watch your diet. You don't have to eat all those dates. Save some for the scum up here, will you? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's wild. Your wife's a lovely girl. She died. But you can't know that. He's not looking good. Did you say something to Captain Harris? Now, what would I have said to Captain Harris? He's acting very funny. Now this guy's all paranoid that they're going to find out. So I guess the guy with the monkey's gone. Ooh, blisters. happened the photos torn up did he kill himself we are ready to proceed it's quite essential to maintain our schedule i reckon we've been flogging a dead horse long enough oh no they've lost their hope let me tell you something somebody's been stealing water out of this tank stealing the water, water. Stealing. if it happens again and i see who's doing it i'll kill him oh it was me. Not it was you. But for his, he needed it for his stuff, right? Yes, because whilst you people have been sleeping or pursuing your own ridiculous little interests, I have been working. Oh. However, it won't happen again. Because from now on, we shall all work equally hard. Why didn't you just come and ask me for it? <laughs> because you wouldn't have given me any. You're damn right I would! I thought he was using it for, like, the equipment. I don't know. Now, don't tell me you don't think he's crazy. I think we're, everyone's getting a little crazy. As we agree, he's as mad as a hatter. Do you think the rest of us aren't? Do you think you've been behaving rationally? All he wants to do is see that thing fly, and he doesn't care who gets killed in the process. And I've done my share of killing. My score is five now. What does he want to do? Improve on that? And no, I don't believe you're really all that concerned about those five men. Ooh. Maybe men like Dorfman can build machines that can do Frank Town's job for him and do it better. But if you really mean that it is all your fault, then it's up to you to bloody well get us out of here, isn't it? If you hadn't made a career out of being a drunk, you might not have been a second-rate navigator. You might have checked that engineer's report on the radio, and we might not be here. All right? Oh, Lou, I... I... He gone. Oh, man, they're, they're both so good. They're both so good actors, and a movie like this, you know... The acting is so important. It's all about people. Why the hell is it on the generator? What's the point? We need something to motivate us. Aw. Oh. I like Lou. Come on, you drunken bum. Let's get back to work. Man, this is tough to watch. Oh man, this is tough. You can't really blame anybody for how they're acting in this in these uh, extreme circumstances. It's just showing like everybody being pushed their limits and how they all react to it. What's the drill, Mr. Dorfman? You're not yet ready for heavy work. I'd like to do something. It's crazy that this guy got back, but we're not gonna learn about what happened exactly. I think we are ready to proceed. All right? Go! Okay, is it now that we're moving the, the whole plane now? Oh no, we're not even to that part yet. Unless they're moving it in sections. Yeah, I don't see how they're gonna move this whole thing. They're almost out of water. Let's go! All right! Well done, Watson. Get that up in the slack. Whew. Hold on! 
Okay. Hold it! Unbelievable what they're doing here. I got a story for the Daily Mirror when I get back. Oh, I stopped smoking in three days. Well, that's a good sign when he gets back. Hey, you've done a wonderful job, Heinrich. I hope something doesn't collapse, crush somebody. You know, it's, it's really beginning to look like something. Don't worry, Mr. Towns. Helicopters don't look very elegant either, but they fly reasonably well. This place I was at last year, there's this bent uh, Farida or something. She did a sort of a dance. I've woken up a few nights in a cold sweat thinking about it, I can tell you. <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> The Phoenix. What's the point of that? I just thought I'd give it a name. It's a bird. Reborn? The Phoenix was a mythical bird that burned itself to ashes and rose. I'm not bloody stupid, you know. And rose from the flames. It's perfect. What's the matter, Captain? Smell the sea? <laughs> oh. I count twelve. Probably a Russia raiding party. People with camels. But would they even be able to communicate with them? And would they even want to help them? They said they might be a raiding party. Who are they gonna raid out here though? I don't get it. They got camels. They could take us out of here. They are a raiding party. The killing a few people like us wouldn't mean a thing. But they are in all probability lost. Just as short of water as we are. If we leave them yeah. alone, they'll move on and we can get back to work. They might kill us for our water. Well, we have to find out. And this time I'll go with you. I'll take Sergeant Watson with me. I've already told you that I'd be going. And what's the sense of these chaps building this contraption if you're not here to drive it? And nobody's gonna drive this fool thing. What? We'll approach them in a circle. So if they do prove to be unfriendly, they won't double back and find you. Hey, why, Sergeant? Ready? He has a gun. I'm not going. I'm giving you an order. You ought to come with me. And you leave me no alternative but to place you under open arrest. Give me that revolver. No. Oh, my God. Very well, Sergeant. Mr. Towns, I'm going out on my own. I, I believe I go along with you. I do speak a little Arabic. Do you? Oh, there you Not go. enough. Merci. Allons-y. Allons-y. Maybe he was hoping his superior officer would just uh, die so he wouldn't have to follow orders. I don't know. He didn't seem to like being in the service. Maybe that's why he didn't tell them that he was out there in the desert when he came back. He's just over it. We can't just sit here. Look, Frank, Harris is no fool. He may be a bit excessively British, but <laughs> excessively he's British. no fool if, if you and I go barging in. That'll really put the lid on it. Uh, maybe you're right. <laughs> They're gone? Well, well, we better have a look. He's like, we should never have even tried to talk to them, huh? Oh, no. Oh, no. There goes their doctor. Camel too. slave. That's why they left. It's a slave. Could they eat the camel? Could they make a fire and cook it? Well, I know it's it's sad to to try to like balance the weight of like a human life, but does that put the survivors in a worse situation cuz they have less He's people dead, to work he? on the oh on the project or because they have less people that they need to give water is that better? Yeah, he, he deserved that. I, 
I wasn't really a fan of Captain Harris at first, but he did grow on me since he came back. Oh, his dancing girl? Oh, we're starting to hallucinate now. I feel like Harris could have been a lot more harsh on this guy, but he he just kind of let a lot of things go and was quite gentle with him, even though maybe wasn't deserved. Oh, la la. Mr. Tons and I will be in the fuselage itself. We testing this engine today? So it looks like only two people can sit in the airplane and then the rest have to go on the wings? But if you want me to fly this thing, I'd have a lot more respect for it if I knew the engine worked. There's no reason why it shouldn't run as it did before. And if I'm to fly this machine, I'm going to test run that engine today. The vibration will put unnecessary strain on the whole structure. There are only seven cartridges in the Kaufman starter. It could take four or five to start the engine, leaving us only with two or three when we are ready to depart. Any doubt about starting this engine? Now is the time to find out. You behave as if stupidity were a virtue. <laughs> He's very stubborn. <sighs> Frank is well, very stubborn. He's like, he does. Uh, well, he doesn't want to admit that this guy might know more than him about airplanes. No, you are not. Oh. You could kill a man with that. Hello? Poor Lou. <laughs> no. I, I know it's difficult for you to get on with Frank Towns, but... Mm, they're always butting heads. He needs to feel he's doing something. You don't leave him anything. Well, I can see how Frank would feel not so great if he's, in his mind, it's his fault that they're in this situation, that five, I guess seven now, have died, and not having any part of actually saving them. And I guess old Frank Towns just never could stand being told what to do. He was right about the engine, too. I guess I just wanted to make a point. That's what really gets you about him. He always has to be right. Come in. Yeah, a few minutes. Well, at least he can self-reflect on that maybe he's being not as cooperative as he could be. What else do you want me to say? Leave me alone. If we don't go back to work, we're gonna die. All of us. Yes. Go away. You told Towns he was behaving as if stupidity was a virtue. If he's making it into a virtue, you're making it into a bloody science! Lou is the hero of this story. I want to talk to all of you. Mr. Towns, who is an authority here? You are. Very well, then. I have decided to finish this plane and make it fly. He had to put his pride aside a little bit there. This the outfit you work for? Becker Flug, so yeah. Don't, don't they build model planes? The best. I didn't know they produced the big stuff, too. The biggest we make is the Adler. The Adler has a two meter wingspan. What? Come on, what, what about the big stuff? Is it a different department or what? Don't tell me they're all models. Jäger 250. It won the prize for extended flight at Frankfurt last year. Extended flight? The radio control also is my design. How much designing have you done on the uh, oh. real thing? The real thing? Oh, no, 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 you misunderstand. We make nothing but uh, model aeroplanes. <laughs> never designed a full-sized airplane oh no, but but then of course the principles are the same i think i better check on the control linkages he's crazy lou 
He builds toy airplanes. But they fly. They have engines and, and stuff. He didn't even keep anything from us. He really doesn't think there's any difference. What are we going to tell them, though? Nothing. Don't give up. It's still the best option we have, right? We can die here. <laughs> oh, oh, we can die in that thing. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know how it feels to fly a toy, toy airplane? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Lou, Lou. Please. <laughs> Don't Lou, I need you. I need you to I need you to stay sane because you are the glue here, Lou, please. <laughs> oh no. Oh Lou. <laughs> oh, he was the rock. Why you keep humoring him like this? If a thing can't fly, it can't fly. That's all there is to it. Well, you won't know until you try, Frank. You'd be lucky if these guys could walk tomorrow, let alone pull this thing. Oh, now yeah, they still have to pull it. it what have to be done? The propeller itself will provide a basic impetus. Man will mainly be to give it direction. It, it might be better not to mention to the others about... Uh, being a toy plane designer. Toy plane designer? A toy plane is something you wind up and it rolls along the floor. A model aeroplane is something totally different. A model plane has to fly itself. There's no pilot to correct the trend. Therefore, if anything, a model plane has to be designed for greater stability than what you are pleased to call the real thing. Oh. In 1851, Henson and Stringfellow built a rubber-powered model that flew 600 meters before encountering an obstruction. I believe in you. I believe Heinrich... Hein Heinrich? Well... Where is he? I can't get him. Here he is. In, 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 in 1851, Henson and Stringfellow built a rubber piled model aircraft that flew 600 meters before encountering an obstruction. Did you know that, Mr. Sartre? That's great. <laughs> I understand that those are the only cartridges we have. If you fail with them, my work has been wasted. Vibration must be kept to a minimum. Moment of truth coming up right here. Clear. That's number one. Two. Oh, my goodness. Maybe he ain't giving it enough juice. That's better. It's still not enough. Three. But he, he should know, shouldn't he? He does know. Wait! You're wasting the cartridges. What are you doing? I'm going to use one cartridge, ignition off, clean out the cylinders. No! Stop! I forbid you! I forbid you! Did he figure the best chance of success was to use the... I'm confused. I don't know about airplanes. It, it looks like it's working, so why is Heinrich still freaking out? See? We're good. We're good. He was trying to clear out the cylinders. Okay. But we still gotta... Okay, we still have a lot of work to do, though, right? Guess he knew what he was doing. They still gotta drag it to the valley. Right? All right, Mr. Dorfman, start 
Jack Pollock. Oh, man. This is nerve wracking. Where's the valley at? Where's the monkey? Oh, the monkey's in the... They need a break. Did they get to where they needed to go? Oh! Don't let the monkey fall! Okay, so... Do they have a way to strap down or do they just have to hold on for dear life? They're not strapping down, huh? So they're behind these little panels. That's crazy. They're just holding on. All right, it's all you now, Mr. Pilot. They're on skis, it's crazy. Oh, his hat. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. 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 oh, they're not going up. They gotta get over those sand dunes. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> this poor monkey. <laughs> Look at him! Look at him go! People! Ah! What the hell is that? <laughs> it's a toy plane! <laughs> hey, they ain't gonna try to land that thing here, are they? Yup. <laughs> they land okay you got it you got to give Dorfman a hug come on <laughs> this guy's crazy hey everyone was okay without a drink I wouldn't believe just a plain water could look so good I'd become an addict <laughs> How far did you say that Henson and Stringfellow flew that rubber-powered model? 600 meters, Mr. Tons. That meters or yards? Meters, Mr. Tons. <laughs> meters. Aw. <laughs> oh. What happened? He was flying for the film. I guess to get footage. They were doing a second take. He crashed. Wow. That was a great movie. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I especially loved the acting and the characters and the focus on the characters and the relationships with each other how they handled the stress of the situation that they were in. I thought the story was very compelling, very gripping. I thought the pacing was great. I never felt like things were moving too slow or I was getting bored. I was really tuned in to everything that was going on, every little detail. A lot of what was going on was being conveyed non-verbally by, by maybe a look that a character would give, look on their face, you could see the sorrow, anger, fear, things like that, confusion, a little desperation, of course. I thought Frank Towns was a really interesting character. He is the captain, he is the one that everybody trusts at the beginning, that everybody looks to, he's the leader, he's the expert on flying the planes, he's a great pilot, he has years of experience. We as the audience 
look up to him as the main character, the person who really seems to want to make sure that everybody survives. But we start to see little cracks, little imperfections of that strong leader. Maybe he's a little bit too rigid, a little too stubborn, and a little too prideful to accept help and advice from others, to let that leadership be passed on or dispersed amongst other people. But what I really loved, despite all that, he was really quick to kind of step back and see where his faults were. He realized that the crash was due to pilot error. He was able to take responsibility for that, even if it was just with himself. And after he got into it with Dorfman, he was able to kind of sit back and think, maybe, maybe it's, maybe I'm the problem here. Maybe I'm not wanting to give up command, things like that. I thought he was a really great character because he was so flawed, but also so very likable. Dorfman was a very interesting character because he uh, also had his pride. The two very prideful, thinking that they're the right. They have the answers. They are the ones that should be leading. Of course, they were going to butt heads with each other. But I loved how Dorfman was really the one who kind of brought them together to tackle the problem and find a solution instead of trying to walk out 100 miles through the desert without really being able to reliably tell if they were going the right way or just sitting and waiting for a rescue that was probably not going to come, that was probably not going to be able to find them since they were so off course. And he came up with this crazy, crazy plan to build a plane out of, you know, the parts from their original plane and and then the phoenix was built and i loved when the phoenix was being named and i was like oh this is this is the phoenix i thought the first plane that they were on was the phoenix i thought it was the phoenix the whole time but no this this thing that they built together with everybody working together through the leadership of dwarfman they created the phoenix and so when I saw him writing that name on the side of that thing, I was like, oh, yes, I got really excited because, you know, the flight of the Phoenix, you know, this thing's going to fly and it's going to be awesome. And yeah, that was that was really cool. I also liked Captain Harris. At first, I was like, OK, this guy is crazy um, going on this like suicide mission out into the desert without equipment, without a lot of water. And I was like, OK, well, that guy's dead. He came back. He came back and he was he was a really likable character. I really liked him. He didn't really take things personally with the the guy who was below him, the general or whatever. Um didn't catch his name, but that guy had some issues. He didn't want to be in the military. I guess he didn't want to be taking orders from his commanding officer. I I don't know. Like I was I was trying to figure that guy out and he was the most difficult for me to really pin down, I think. Okay, sorry, I had to walk. I Okay, I had to look it up because I knew was, I was getting it wrong. Not general, sergeant. Sergeant Watson. He was doing some really shady things and I was really trying to pin down his motives and his thought process and it was a little bit difficult. I really didn't like it when he saw his captain alive returned from this impossible mission against all odds and he was just like i'm i'm just gonna pretend i didn't see this i think he was just i don't want to like be too hard on anybody in this because they were under a lot of pressure they were in a life and death situation it was getting to the point where they didn't have enough water so it's like if this person dies i have a better chance of living so i think he just he really wanted to survive and so well that and maybe just not wanting to have his superior officer there to give him orders to do dangerous things and to drink drink some of the water that you know they needed desperately so he was just like sorry dude i'm just gonna let you out there and die but luckily captain harris was found by dorfman and um yeah he was just very understanding very lenient with watson even though i don't think he really had to be maybe he shouldn't have been i was wondering if watson was pretending to be injured when uh they were supposed to go out into the desert at first 
And then when I saw him with a limp, I'm like, oh, maybe he did get injured. But now I'm thinking, yeah, maybe he was just kind of faking it or got himself injured on purpose so that he wouldn't have to go. Anyways, um, my favorite character was Lou. I loved Lou so much. He was the glue. He was my rock. He was everybody's rock. He was the one that was the mediator between the two that were butting heads, uh, Towns and Dorfman, Frank, Heinrich. He held out hope for the longest out of everyone. And when he lost that hope, when they learned that Dorfman didn't actually design actual full-sized aircraft, so that they were just toy airplanes, they were model airplanes, and he thought, well, this guy is just crazy. He doesn't even realize. He doesn't know what he's talking about, but he did. But Lou didn't know that. So Lou lost his hope and, and had a bit of a crazy, like, that's it moment. Like, we're done. All that. And this is, this was the reality. Toy airplanes. Wow. <laughs> that was the toughest moment, or at least one of the toughest moments for me of the film. No, that was probably the toughest moment was that kind of break in Lou. And it was so well acted too. Like, it was like this kind of insane, almost jolly laugh that turning into like a full-blown like cry. So I really did love the uh, the model airplane reveal that really caught me off guard. And that was, it was funny at first, but then it was also, I was feeling like this kind of terror of like, oh my gosh, like maybe, maybe this is not gonna work. Is this guy really a genius and just really knows his stuff and is really sure about himself? Or is he just, a lunatic, oblivious to like what the problem would be that he only works on model airplanes and doesn't realize that there is a big difference. I mean, I don't know what the difference between them is. Frank and Lou didn't know and then they wouldn't even listen to him after that. And then of course, when they finally took off, whew, that was that was really good. I had my doubts a little bit, but for the most part, I was like, yeah, we're, this is, this is going to fly. It's called the flight of the Phoenix. But when it did happen, like, oh, that felt so good. They were doing it. They were flying. They did it. They worked so hard. And because they went through so much and then we as the audience went through all this with them, it just, it felt so good. It felt so good. I was, I was right there with them. Lastly, the nice little friendly banter between Frank and Heinrich was really great. And it was a nice wrap up to the movie. It felt, the ending felt a little bit abrupt, but I mean, what else is there really? They got out, they made it, they settled their differences, and what an amazing movie. I loved it. I want to thank you guys for watching this with me. If you've seen this movie before, tell me why you love it what you love about it, and if you are seeing it for the first time with me, then please tell me what you thought. I think more people should see this movie. There is a remake that came out. Um, I don't know when, but that might be something that you guys might be interested in seeing. I don't know if I'll be watching it anytime soon, so quickly after watching this original, but maybe someday I'll check it out. I just, I feel like it's really not necessary for a movie like this. It's just so, so well put together. I mean, remakes are nice for like action movies, flashy movies, but this is just, it's all about the characters. You don't need huge sets, a bunch of different sets. It's all about the characters and I really love that. Okay, thank you guys for watching. I look forward to reading all your comments and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.